Hi, I'm Gustavo Vinagre. I'm director and producer of a Rosa Azul de Novales, the Blue Flower of Novales. And we are here presenting the film at the Forum at Berlinale. I'm Rodrigo Carneiro. I'm co-director and I did the editing. Hi, I am Marcelo Giorgio. I'm the actor in the movie and also the character and I'm really glad to be here in Berlin I think in the end of the day, what me define is the fact that I am also a necrophile. Hi, welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. My name is Jean-Bois Bobac, and I'm here to discuss the film The Blue Flower of Novalis with its creators. Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome to the Berlinale. Welcome to the Teddy Award. Um, first of all, um, it was very interesting to see that the film um, blurs the lines somewhat between fiction and documentary. At certain points, it felt very real, but of course, it's very performative as well. Um, so what was your approach to that? What was, what was the idea behind it? Well, I think when I do documentary, I'm always trying to use the characters' fantasies and mm -hmm. desires and memories. And to me, that's like a type of archive. So okay. I think that blurs the line naturally between fiction and yeah. documentary because it's... I'm always searching for that dream-like uh, moment when the character, you know, pretends to be other one in his own fantasy. So yeah. I think naturally we are always mixing fiction and documentary in our own lives when we yeah. go to sleep and dream and we are having another kind of narrative. So mm -hmm. that's what I try to, to yeah. bring to the films I do. Yeah. I think yeah. No. I think it's interesting uh, that you pointed out um, that it's sort of an archive in a way, um, because indeed it it felt a bit like of an oral history account almost. Mm -hmm. It was very personal, um, of course, in that sense subjective as well. But it still gave quite a great overview, I would say, of. Um, what it means to be different, what it means to go on a journey of knowing yourself and, and somehow this whole um, social atmosphere also came alive in the background. Mm -hmm. um, was this something that, that you were conscious about and that you deliberately, deliberately wanted to, to transport? Yeah, I think uh, we fell in love with uh, the oral capacities of Marcelo. I'm and sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> and the way he speaks about his life and the way he tells stories and he takes us to places. So we didn't need much more than him speaking mm -hmm. uh, to create this whole world, his background, as you yeah. say, like the stories with his 
uh, grandmother and his father, yeah. we don't need to see that because he tells it very well. Yeah. And and I do that also in my previous film. I think it's about uh, uh, the verbal power mm -hmm. to create a whole universe, you know. And yeah. they are really spoken films, so uh, it's about the capacity of people to transform their lives yeah. uh, through spoken word. I think. Speaking, yeah. 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 So what was your approach to that? I think uh, we have like a relationship with, uh, with therapy, you know, with uh, mm -hmm. yeah. psychoanalysis, because uh, even when we talk about our truth, it's like uh, my memories are really different from my uh, mom's uh, memories. So yeah. when we go to the therapist, we always invent uh, not a memory, but a performance to talk about our reality. Mm -hmm. So I really don't believe in documentaries at all right. because uh, the truth is really personal. And I'm thinking about the relationship with uh, uh, the fiction uh, and how fiction ca can save us. Uh, when I was a teenager, I, I was in love with uh, Nietzsche mm -hmm. and uh, uh, in one of his books, he was talking uh, against uh, uh, this uh, uh, seduction of uh, escape, escape. Mm -hmm. you know, art cannot be something escapist, but we cannot escape from the escapism, you know, and mm -hmm. when we tell our truth, uh, we have, uh, uh, we can approach to the truth and also escape from it, you know. Yeah, right. And that's also important, I think, that you pointed out that, um, there is something about therapy in this film. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, indeed, the power of the spoken word and opening up to, to just share yeah. someone's inner world. I think that's very powerful and it kind of puts the viewer in a position where you are pushed to embark on your own inner journey. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this was an aim at all when, when you were working on this project? Yeah, I think we always talk about it, me and Rodrigo, uh, that we need to talk about certain traumas mm, yeah. uh, and we want the who's watching to think about their own traumas and be able to talk about it. So uh, I think uh, it's really hard to mankind to to go inside yeah. and discover things about oneself, yeah. you know? And I th with this film, we would like people to start like a journey of self-knowledge, uh, you know? Yeah. In a way, not in like a self-help way, yeah, but yeah. Uh, looking inside, you know? Yeah. Searching for things, I think that's also connects with the idea of the Ennis uh, mm, going yeah. inside the, the rectum, you know. Uh, yeah, let's talk a bit about yes. that because that's a very prominent, um, I would say, tunnel in the film. It really is the audience's way to get into this character and to have a connection with, with that character. And I think it was a very um, unorthodox choice uh, and I and I was just wondering what motivated it and, and what's all about the anus in this in this film. Okay. I, I just realized that, that um, we always think in a sexist uh, uh, culture we always think about the woman as uh, as a as a passive uh, and yeah. a man as an active and uh, for me, it's really interesting because I was talking about my grandmother, yeah. I was talking about my mother, I was talking about my grandfather and, and, and father, and we had two different ar archetypes and really like uh, uh, conventional, the man and the woman. And we are talking about a man, but a man, uh, you can go inside and uh, he's fragile and he's uh, 
Yeah. He's like a mixture of uh, this archer type. So yeah. uh, I think it's. Uh, mm -hmm. I just realized it that so mm -hmm. it's a man. Yeah. It's a movie about a man. Yeah. So sometimes it's really like uh, phallic. You know, it's really like mm. about the, the gay culture and about a man. But it's a different uh, uh, approach to the to the racial type. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Mas mesmo no mundo gay, né, nós temos essa estrutura, né, dessa heteronormatividade que está colocada nas relações gays, né? I'm saying that even in the gay world, it's really uh, we have these uh, straight uh, stereotypes, mm -hmm. like, and I think the asshole is also a taboo for the gay. And in many places, still, and it's always about the woman because the bottom guy yeah. or the guy who yeah. uses uh, his ass is always the feminine, and being feminine is something really bad. So right. when we talk about the ass, it's something. It's not uh, something genital, but it's uh, why I'm judged by even by gay men who no, you have to be versatile, or you have to be top, or you yeah. have to be. Mainly, so. Eu acho que na cena do sexo no sofá que tem no filme há uma uma certa desconstrução é, dessa estrutura, não? E um certo jogo crítico com essa relação de passivo ativo. Não sei da gender. He's also. saying that the sex scene uh, in the couch, yeah. there's like this plane with the the rows of uh, bottom or top and. There is some type of criticism from the character from Marcelo with the guy he's having sex. So, but I think the end is also is like a, a window to a, a new universe. I think it's like, mm -hmm. I think the film is not enough to get to know Marcelo. So you have to get inside somehow. I, while we were doing the film, it was really hard for me because I always felt that. I didn't have like a genuine uh, only Marcelo story that it was always about someone else or about his references, literary references, yeah. artistic references, or his family. And I really wanted to f to hear what is truly his, and that was really hard for me because I was always trying to get that story from him, and I think it's. Uh, the asshole is like an invitation to go in and find yourself that story uh, mm. that's missing, yeah. perhaps. Right. We mentioned that uh, the literary references, and I mean the title as well in itself is a literary reference. What drawn you to the novelis and in particular to this symbol of the blue flower, which is so prominent in, in Romanticism? Because I really thought I was uh, maybe I had other lives, and because I could remember the the life where I I was a military, yeah. uh, and I was really afraid of it. I don't know if it was a dream or a real memory, and I was thinking about my relationship with Germany and with romanticism and with this idea of something we need to wake up every day and when I read uh, Novalis' story I had some, I had uh, like a, an Next. epiphany and I thought maybe I was Novalis because I was really attached to the idea of uh, uh, of his mysticism and mm. another kind of mysticism, something in, in a, uh, a time uh, really close to, to our time, you know, yeah. Europe and uh, now Brazil also, everybody was a little bit afraid of uh, everything, the French Revolution in, in Europe and uh, he was really, he was always talking about the night and about the death and about uh, taboos. Uh, yeah. 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 See. And this mysticism, because it also somehow sits over the whole film, there is like this mystic milieu to the whole thing. What was it that really interested you about about this aspect? I think 
I'm really closer to the to artists like uh, Pasolini or Visconti or Novalis or Dante or Mishima. Uh, some of them were considered like conservative, at uh, like uh, Dante or Mishima, but just because they are they are talking about a society uh, we never knew or we lost. Uh, in Pasolini's case, it was a pre-industrial society. And I have this necessity to escape, uh, I think, just to, to look at uh, another yeah. our horizon because uh, I think we are struggling to, yeah. to understand our time and uh, they were uh, really uh, brave to sometimes to propose uh, not a, a comeback but yeah. uh, to resignify the, the time yeah. they lived. Yeah. I think this mysticism has totally to do with him, with right. the character. I think he yeah, brought I that really to made, the film. Yeah. So we were talking about him, so it was impossible to escape that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a mysticism really... Uh, uh, like, objectified. It's in the body, you know? It's like you bring this religious thing to yourself and to sex and to... So it's it's kind of ritual. Yeah. We really believe in we need some uh, liturgy, you know. Yeah. When we go to the to a cinema or to opera or you don't need a church, but uh, I think we have sex as we are doing a ritual. Mm -hmm. uh, the way we connect with each other, yeah. even if it's a sex or hard sex or violent sex or doesn't matter. But we are always trying to to do something with uh, with some meaning and just because the meaning uh, escapes us uh, maybe there are no meaning at all and the art is the only place where we can really uh, play with the lit liturgy and uh, yeah. just because it's fun and it's meaningful and we can like I'm really pessimist about everything and I oh, think really? yeah and I think art is the only place where we can really be ridiculous and uh, 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 just go free. Just go free and believe in something. Eu acredito que a religião elas funcionam para amenizar um pouco o sofrimento humano, né, e a dor existencial de cada um. He believes that religion exists to uh, make people suffer less, like a support. Mm -hmm. E acredito que o sexo também tem esse papel, né? Que é também um momento de curas. É, esses fetiches todos servem para expurgar traumas e dores internas. Ele acredita que o sexo tem uma maneira similar para ajudar as pessoas. É onde eles podem viver seus fetiches e, talvez, ganhar alguns traumas. É uma experiência, né? a experiência do gozo ela é uma experiência talvez mística nesse sentido de uma elevação né? de, dessas, de, desse uh -huh. corpo no sentido de... That, uh, how do I translate this? That coming maybe is a way to connect to some mystical essence of the world. Mm -hmm. Através de um esvaziamento. Né? That means that we won the ecumenical prize, please. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's not about faith in a... In a conservative uh, vision, it's something more like uh, diving inside, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, when yeah. the camera goes to in inside, inside myself. Yeah. Uh, it's more about, uh, it's, it's inside, it's not outside. So I think I, uh, we live in a, in a time uh, really closer to the Novalis mm -hmm. time yeah. because it's, uh, the French Revolution, uh, people were really like optimists about uh, science and those things, and Novalis just understood it was not enough. So that's okay, we need science, we need democracy, it's awesome. But uh, the humanity is something really, uh, we are always escaping, you know. Uh, the perfect society will never uh, be made of. Uh, you, you cannot just uh, kill something to build something yeah. in its place. Yeah. So I think this uh, relationship with mysticism is a, 
is a is a struggling to uh, to find a synthesis, mm. you know, yeah. something about uh, hug everything, and it's and also it's about sex because erotism is uh, a way to to play roles and uh, different uh, ways of uh, living and uh, to connect yeah. each other. It's yeah. it's uh, the it's really democratic in some point. When you go to a gay place to, to fuck, uh, you can fuck with everybody. It's not just, it's strictly hedonistic. It's something really about the, that belief that mm -hmm. we are made of the same, uh, you know? Same thing somewhere, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. are like animals, but an animal with something else. And maybe yeah. something terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's talk about then a bit about sex because we seem to get back to this mm -hmm. to this uh, part of the film um, quite strongly. And indeed, it's it's a it's a very prominent part of the film. Um, we hear a lot about sex. We also see uh, some of it. Um, so I'm I'm just curious about. How did you go about the portrayal of sexuality in this film, the depiction of it? Uh, because it's very, it seems very honest and it seems very raw and, and out there. Uh, was this explicitness something that, that you knew from the beginning that yes, this is how we should depict sexuality in this film? Hmm. Of course. <laughs> I think it's something about power. Uh, a critic in Brazil said uh, Oscar Wilde uh, has this quotation uh, everything is about sex, but sex. Sex is about power. And Gustavo and Rodrigo reached to do a movie where sex is sex. It's not about power. He yeah. plays with the idea of power because he is. Uh, uh, worshipping uh, uh, like a god in the scene or he's fucking with a really big guy and muscled guy and yeah it's about power but it's about something else and I think it's really uh, for me it's really pushing edge when you show a body that's not so like standard or when you show a body uh, I, I have uh, I'm struggling to accept uh, uh, parts of myself but it's really nice when you can show people doing uh, those things like yeah. uh, playing at the sex and uh, because you have no more power over me because you know yeah. my belly you know my whole body so I am the guy uh, showing in the, in the screen and also I'm not so it's not important. In Brazil, you know, in Germany, you go to the lakes and you get naked. That's something yeah. I really appreciate here. But in Brazil, people have a, a problem with uh, nudity and also with sex and also with uh, getting older, you know? Yeah. Uh, when I saw the, the movie the first time, I realized that, okay, I'm not young, you know, more. I'm... And Brazilian culture is always about being uh, uh, young and really handsome and really strong and but most of, of, of people are not like uh, this mother you know Giselle Bündchen is just one so yeah, right. the Brazilian woman don't look like her she's Brazilian she's a woman she's a human being of course but we are not like her so but Brazilian culture is about being free and have power in the Schopenhauer and uh, uh, or Nietzsche and uh, uh, meaning and uh, just if you are uh, Giselle Bündchen, you know, it's about being a Hubermensch. So we are not, yeah. we are just people trying to right. live and... Uh, yeah. To me, it's, uh, the sex come, comes really naturally in the film because of who he is, because of what we like. We like to talk about sex. It's never meant to shock. Mm -hmm. Uh, people say that a lot that we, about my films that I'm always trying to do. But to me it's just what I am and what I like to talk about and to me it's just part of human nature 
and I'm always questioning why people like uh, portray so much violence, but they get uh, so uh, shocked with a sex scene, yeah, yeah. and they can see like horrible things in so many action movies or horror films that I love horror films, but you can see really explicit yeah. violence, but you cannot see a, a penetration or some other type of sex. Because sex is a violence for the people. He's saying that sex sometimes is violent to people. And, and all those gossips about uh, people's uh, sexual life, you know, we are always fighting with people and even with gay people because the gossips about the the son of the president being a gay man mm -hmm. it doesn't matter right. uh, and also oh you know uh, uh, the guy is button he's just button it's something really bad or a woman so this slut shaming all time in our culture not just the, yeah. the gay culture but the culture uh, in general and for us it's just a uh, Okay, people cannot have power over you because you are a button or you are a sexual active woman or yeah. you are a transsexual who don't want to look like a, a, a cisgender woman, but you are a, a transsexual, you were born like, uh, yeah. like this and uh, you are a transsexual who mm -hmm. wears a beard, for example. That's okay, it's, yeah, you know? Yeah. The film, uh, in the film, the camera, has a very fluid movement. The whole thing is very fluid. We very fluidly change between the different stories as well and different ways of performing in the film as well. Um, which for me sort of suggested or gave um, a particularly queer gaze to the movie. Um, I don't know how conscious you were about that and um, how organically this whole thing came to the film. I think it was uh, basically uh, one idea that Rodrigo brought was to bring to life some of the memories mm -hmm. of Marcelo yeah. and that yeah it was like we incorporated these ideas very naturally <laughs> but we were never like searching for a queer gaze I think because a queer gaze is something that is always changing and it's really a mutant. And that's about being queer, I think. Yeah. So if you try to reproduce queer, probably you're not being queer yeah. because it's always about trying something new and uh, to find a new way to, to tell a story. For me, at least, yeah. that's a queer thing. And when I see a movie that I mean, you can you can feel it when you see that the movie is trying to to be something like yeah. or queer or whatever, and it doesn't feel like natural. I think. Yeah, we just released the the movie in a festival in Brazil, and a girl said, and I was really afraid of uh, of her opinion because she's a feminist. She made a a film about rape and those things and I was afraid about uh, how the movie is really masculine mm -hmm. in some way and she said I just loved the movie because I was wa uh, I was watching your stories and they are really really like taboo and really violent for me and really dense but I was having this experience like I was uh, eating a sponge cake mm. with my grandmother, oh, and I oh, think nice. it's uh, it's thanks to to them and to myself, of course, because the queer culture is always about how we deal with something they did with us, yeah. and they are the capitalists and also the patriarchy. Yeah. They are the same. And I think it's, uh, it's really, there's something really strong about gay and queer culture because we can be really like evil and mean, but we are always trying to discuss mm. our traumas. Yeah. 
we are nav never, of course you can be a, a, a alienated, or, but we are always the gay culture, when we think about a gay culture, not the gene, not the sauna, not the drugs, when we think about uh, Bruce LaBruce or Visconti or Pasolini or Gustavo Rodrigo or uh, uh, yeah. uh, I don't know, the drag queen or uh, the fight between drag queens and feminists, we are always talking about let's discuss the taboos to be free of them. And we, in gay culture, because we are men, uh, we are always trying to to have a deal with the patriarchy because we are part of the patriarchy. We have a uh, few privileges to be men and not women in a country like Brazil, really sexist yeah. and really... Misogynist. misogynist. Really misogynist, yeah. yeah. But it's... I feel really proud about being gay and even about... Uh, have HIV because it's something uh, something about being uh, m marginal you know it's not mm. something we have accept as part of the system because this system is not good enough for us not for gay people for everybody uh, yeah. Foucault before uh, uh, a little time before we died, he said, I, I'm really upset about the gay culture because you are fighting for marriage and, the, and these things, but you never uh, be like everybody else. And I really like the idea mm -hmm. that yeah. we cannot just fight for marriage. I am uh, 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 for marriage, of course, the right to marry a guy you love. But the question is, as a human being, you are more than just being accepted or tolerated. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that this film will provide a very good soil for a lot of discussions about the future as well that you mentioned. Um, so I would like to thank you for having this very nice and very fruitful conversation. And I wish you all the best for the Berlinale. Hopefully we see each other very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.